at the end of the day, when all we went through, the 60s, the 30s, the plotting, the measuring, at the end of the day, this, ladies and gentlemen, is what it's about. Now, I'm going to do the best I can to get you to zoom, get you to see for a blur. Alright. Notice the gray area, if it's picking it up. You see a touch of shiny and then the gray and then it, it ends at the 30. Now what I did, after I did the valve job, I went in here and took a 30 degree cut and cut 30 until I kissed that right at the edge of that valve job. So 45 hits and rolls off, you can see the 30 degree angle. Now, the trick is to get every one knees in the exact same spot and the same width. I'm going to let you be the judge of that. I'm going to move the camera as easy as I can. Here we go. I just wish I had a... I want to, I'm, the next camera I buy soon, by sometime mid-year, is going to be a lot better and a better zoom. But as you can see, I think I gave the man exactly what he wanted. Let's come on down here. I think in the reflection, right here, you can plain see the gray and then stop. Let's see how wide that seat is. Oop, knocked the valve over on the... Um, that blame mat. Let's see if I can get that in there. Okay. Wow. Look at that. Forty thousandths. That's what I wanted. I'm not in no way a braggart, guys. Believe me, I'm not. I, I never claim to be the best or, or a Bernard Mondello. I'm not. But I have got every one of these. I, I mean, every one of them's right around 40,000. It's real close, 41, 42 on every single one of these damn things. All right, now, in the same width and the same location. Let's go to the exhaust. Yank, if you're watching this, you're one of the ones out there that truly knows how hard this is to do. It is not a task for the light heart, and it takes hours. Uh, this including that center exhaust that I stopped to show you, the end time on the valve job and setting them up was four and a half hours, right at four hours and 25 minutes total. All right. This one's a touch wider. Hold on. About 47. There we go. 46. Alright. Now this is what I'm proud of when I'm fixing the show right now. It makes my day. Was it every one of these are 10,000. So they're a little bit farther up than the exhaust. Let's start here at the end. All right, I can see the gray through the groove view, groove view finder. I'll raise it up. Boom, shiny gray, straight shiny. Shiny gray, and boom. Ten thousandths from the edge, every one of these. And between 46 and 48, I already measured every one of them. I got on film, look at that. I mean, you can see it pretty plain. Bob, I'm Hoff. When you get these out of the box and you look at them, you're going to be able to see firsthand what I'm talking about. Ain't nothing beats seeing them right off the spot. 
I'm seeing uh, Mr. Imhoff heads disassembled because he is going to flow the head. Plus, I wanted him to see the work unassembled. That's how I really like to do it so y'all can see what you paid for. Alright, see, that's it. Every one of them. I mean, I nailed them dead nuts. I will put this valve job against any Surty, against any VG20. Yeah, they can do in 20 minutes what it takes me four hours to do, but they will not get it as concentric around. Okay, blame it. I'll save this to show you one. I forgot to put the, the centric gauge on the viewfinder. I've already hit them all. The worst that I was at was 0011. Most of them averaged 0008 on the run out. I was pretty tired, but I, I'll go back and, and show you one or two. Up. I hated that I had to skip at, at first. Uh, I had already went and checked them, like I told you, the valve seat run out. Yeah. But I had just forgot to put it on film. So what I've done is I've set everything up. Uh, the, the tool is solid black, so I had to put some additional lots in here. And while I've given you the close-ups, I wanted you to see how it worked. But we've already had the discussion about lapping the valves. I'm not saying it all. I mean, I do it on every head I do. But using the valve lapper in combination with the run out tool is the trick. So here's the pilot that I do the valve job with. And I just slide it on there. It's made for this pilot. Now this little black thing right here has to be set exactly on the um, seat of the head. And this adjuster here lets you spring load it and put it where there's pressure. And I'm going to bring you a shot here in a minute. But basically when you get it set up, you slowly turn it like this. And it, the gauge is set to zero. And you go all the way around one rotation. And you look, and it, these are um, half thousandths increments. Okay, on the gauge. So when I make a complete circle, I'm going to know. Now this one that I'm doing is an exhaust valve. And uh, like I said, all of them are below one, first of all. Uh, there's a, a, a bunch of them that are seven and eight tenths. But I'd say probably five to seven, five to six valves are under .0005. And I just can't tell you how hard that is to do. So... Uh, this is how it's done, like I said. Hopefully you can get a little bit of a view out of that. There's the little ball that sits on the seat. When you do them like this, there is no disputing at all what kind of ceiling power that you got. And anything under 1,000 is pure race quality. Like I said, uh, I could probably play with it a little more, the couple of them, and get them below a half thousandths, but, you know, I'm not saying it's senseless, but it, it, it's, it's kind of a waste of time in a way because you've won the prize. All right, now you've seen how that works, sits on there. I'm going to bring the camera up a little bit closer. This will bring you a little bit closer. Now look, you see how that goes? It touches that seat all the way around. I already know what it is. I've got this is one of the ones that are at .0005. All right, now I'm going to bring you dead nuts on top of it. Here we go. I'm starting with the zero up the top. Look there, guys. It ain't hardly even moved off that zero. Look there. You got to keep a little bit of pressure there. It went almost to a half thousandths. Pow, right there. Now that is awesome. Your area right there where it started to show the half thousandths is right around in here. Barely a half. I mean, it really hardly moved, but I always call it a half. You do have to keep thumb pressure on it lightly when you're rotating it around. And when you take it off, it'll move, but that's how it's pressurized. Okay. So we know what you've sit here and witnessed what it got. Now I'm going to show you something on the... Um, a chalkboard here relating to it and then that'll conclude finally all of version 7 uh, 7.9 and then we're done I draw this up for you on the board because I wanted you to try to get a visual of it this is say a stock head which uh, I, 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 a stock head in theoretics where it's supposed to be straight the stock heads are I don't see too many of them that ever hit them numbers, but in a perfect world, this is what you would have. Okay, the guide is perfectly straight. There's your valve seat, and it's at a 90 degree angle. Okay, 
and this would have, when you put that dial gauge on it, it would have under 1,000, meaning that as the valve opens and closes, it is perfectly sealing. That's what we want. And I can't tell you enough how you never get it. I have checked shops for 25 years. I can count the number of times on one hand that I have checked work from shops that had numbers under 1,000. They just don't care. And even their big bad $60,000 30 machines and, and the VG machines, if you're a skilled operator, you've got some of the tricks, yeah, you can get pretty close. I've seen them do it, but still you have to work at it. It takes a savvy to even get the high dollar machines to do it. We've already discussed the relationships of stone versus them cutters. I won't go over that, but now here's one right here that shows what's going on. All right, remember I said anytime you put valve guides in a head, bronze guides, liners, anything, you're moving this center when you install the guide. Well, here's one that has, it's exaggerated where the guide was put in and it's at an angle. So you tried to put it up and what you got, notice how this is the seat line it's barely touching here, but look, it's way over here. That's why you have to use the 60 and the 30 degree cutter to go in there. And basically what it does is the valve angles are cutting. And what it's doing is each time a 60 and 30 is going bump, 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 bump. Till finally, you end up with that right there. But that's what it is. And there's no way possibly you can use a 45 degree stone and it pull that in. Now your lapping compound, what it would show on something like this is it would be light gray over here and a darker gray over here. That's when you raise suspect. Basically when I lap my valves I'm looking to see the coloration of the gray all the way around and if there's even a look. Now this is on stage three and below. All stage 3.5s and 4.0s on head bikes, every one of them heads, get that seat run out dial on it. Even though the color gray can look perfect, I still let the numbers guy go off the numbers. But that's what you can see. So it's when you put the valve guides in a head or, you know, you can check stock heads from the factory. You'd be surprised at what you get. I know I've checked the Chevrolet, um, not bow tie, but the Vortec heads. I bought several sets of them from GM for the round track guys and for shits and giggles, went in there and put that gauge on it, <laughs> three thousandths run out. Three, zero, zero, three. So it's just, you know, getting this in line straightened out is what it's about. Okay, this like out around, the seat in the head, and this right here represents past 1,000s. This perfect world that we don't live in shows it being perfectly straight under 1,000s run out. So I just wanted to show you that's what that dial shows you. The dial touches that little area right there and turns it. We know that Mr. Imhoff, small block Chevy heads, none of them are even 1,000s. They're all under the highest one being 8 and the low figure being 4. So you ever achieve something like that, you've really done a heck of a valve job. But anyway, just wanted to explain to you what this was about. This is what we're trying to do where the guides are put in. That's why I said all of the work on the valve job is done with a 60 degree and a 30 degree stone or 70 degree. That's the work because you're using them two to sit there and chop at the seat and pull it to align it up to the guide to end up with this scenario over here. All right, that's all of version 7, and we're now into getting ready to go into 8.0, which will be the final touches, the blending, the pickup points, and the other stuff, and the conclusion of Imhoff's Double Hunt 186s.